All right, we're going live. Here we go. All right, let's see if we are live yet. Bang, we're live. All right, let me share this a couple times. We'll share this out to the group so everyone can see us. I see it. There it is. <clears throat> Modern technology actually worked. Okay, let's go into Entourage right now. And we'll share it over to Entrepreneurs over there. Computer doesn't like me when I got all these windows open. Dumping an accelerator too for all our accelerator fans. Yeah. Alright, that should be enough. Let's see. Way too much bandwidth here. Alright, alright. see it. There it is. <clears throat> Modern technology actually worked. Okay, okay. Let's go into Entourage right now. All right, I think we're good. You hear me, Chris? I can hear there you. There you go. All right, we're good. Yep. Comment section is open if everyone wants to comment. All right. Welcome to uh, another episode of uh, Fire Starts Fire. And we uh, got Chris Hawley on. We had someone else sneak in the back door. That's what happens to leave the door open. Uh, Dr. B sitting there in the background, uh, the one and only. And uh, Dr. B reached out and said we need to interview his awesome nephew, Chris. So uh, here we are. Um, Chris is, um, I guess, a Dr. B Jr. from uh, what we're seeing, <laughs> following in his footsteps. Um, in the, uh, in the wireless industry, um, sales, district manager, all the corporate stuff, and now he's in the field of coaching and helping other people build, which is kind of the natural progression, I think, that a, a lot of us in this world do. We take everything we've learned in life, and we try and help other people make their lives better. And um, So welcome to the show, Chris. Let's, uh, let's tell us what you're about. Yeah, absolutely. So first of all, thanks for having me on. I appreciate the warm, uh, warm introduction there. One second. I lost um, my camera. Oh, can't have the camera malfunction. Um, yeah, but no yeah, thank you so much for having me on. Uh, there we go. There we go. Uh, thanks for having me on. But yeah, like you said, I've been in the wireless world for, for the last 16 years. Um, I, you know, I started from the bottom, worked my way up kind of thing and had so many different mentors along the way uh, to help me get to where I am today. Um, and it's something I'm really passionate about. I love, love helping people. I love the excitement of it. Um, it's something that, you know, helps me get out of bed in the morning and then um, you know, it's something I've been wanting to do for a long time, and I finally got the ball rolling, um, you know, here recently and, and doing, starting off with my own consulting. So looking to help others, um, you know, look, talking to so many different small business owners or people looking to get things going, um, such an opportunity uh, to basically just help them and get them to where, you know, where they need to be. Uh, and I, I absolutely love doing it. Yeah, it's definitely a good feeling to uh, be able to help people and take what you've learned and, uh, and uh, share it further. Um, just recently, one of our Apex members reached out to me and uh, said, hey, do you do commercial real estate? And I said, yeah, why? And he started telling me that he's been renting all these years and the landlord's looking, looking to sell the building and he's not controlling his own destiny. And, you know, he doesn't have a current lease. He's on a month to month. So he's afraid he can get kicked out or, um, you know, rent raised up, doubled or whatever. So uh, we started talking to him. I said, well, we got to buy you a building then. So he's got some money saved. So working on getting financing with him, we're going to see the building. Building has a couple rental units in in the building also, so uh, he'd use some of it, rent some of it out, and then we started talking about how you're going to own the building, how you're going to own it in a in a corporation, so you know separate the corporation from your business so that you can rent it to yourself, and 
uh, or layer of protection in there. And I started rattling all the stuff. It's all stuff I do and it's stuff that he didn't even think of. And it's, it's funny, like to me, it's common sense that I've done it so many times um, through life and through business, you know, through real estate uh, side, but just in my personal life. And, uh, you know, he, it was stuff that was like brand new to him. And it was to me, it's like, you know, it's our life experience of stuff that we've dealt with and why we do things. Other people haven't dealt with that. And we're able to share our knowledge that we've learned and share with them and get them, keep them from making mistakes and, you know, put them further ahead in their, in their process faster, which is uh, the idea of coaching, right? To shrink time. Yeah, absolutely. Uh, I, yeah, I can't agree more. Um, you know, in my in my personal life, I also coach a lot of sports too. So I, 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 you know, I consider myself a coach. I coach baseball the last ten years. I have four kids myself, and uh, you know, only four, night, only four, only four, only four. My wife won't have the fifth. She's holding me back. Uh, you know, I, we're yeah. trying to convince her on how to the fifth. We gotta have a basketball team worth of kids. Once you have five, uh, they want to have six because if she's anything like my wife, the OCD, they you know, you can't have the uh, odd numbers. So we had four, and I was good, and then we had five, and it's like, well. We can't have an odd number of kids, so we had to have six. Right, yeah. right, that, that, yeah. yeah. Right yeah. now, she's taking care of the one-year-old, and I got the uh, the older three most times. Um, but yeah, I, I feel like I'm coaching every night of the week. I, yes. I absolutely, absolutely love it. So yeah, 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 yeah. yeah. Boys and girls, or uh, we got? Yeah, so we have. I have three boys. I have an 11-year-old. Uh, I have a nine-year-old. I have a six-year-old boy, and then we have a uh, 15-month-old girl. So we finally have the girl. Um, so now, now there's kind of lost the, uh, the edge to have the fifth one now that we finally have the girl. Yeah. Yeah. I, we had the, uh, I had three girls and then the boy and I thought we were done. And then she's like, Oh, we got to, you know, try for another boy. And I was like, it doesn't work that way. So we had two more girls. <laughs> That's right. I love my girls. Girls love daddy. So you'll, you'll see. <laughs> I have six. Yep. I was, saying, I was trying to I was trying to follow along there. I'm like, that's six. Wow, that's 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 four, four to fourteen. Oh. Yeah, and five of them are girls. My son's the fourth. He's uh, nine, turning ten. So he just started pitching for baseball. So that's kind of fun. Yeah, yeah he's that's got awesome. an arm yeah. on him. So that's fun. So yeah, we, yeah, we live vicariously through the kids, and it's all good stuff. And I'll it goes back to, and if you look at the looking back at it, it's team building, right? It's coaching. It's it's what we learn early in our lives of how to work together, how to how to you know. How to encourage each other, how to teach each other, how to work as a group for a common goal, and that translates later. I think I think all kids need to play sports for that reason because it teaches you that team group mentality of how to work together, function together, help each other for a common goal, so everyone wins together. And that goes right into the business world. Um, you know, we're, you got to work with people, you got to help people, you got to encourage people, you got to teach those around you, you got to practice, right? And then you have your game day, and you hope that everything you learned in practice uh, is, makes the next deal, makes the next uh, acquisition, whatever it is purchase there's kind of neat how life parallels all through you know the, we don't think much of it when we're playing sports as a kid but when you look back you learned a lot yeah. you know yeah i mean absolutely do it I, I, one of the favorite things i talk to my kids about is it, it, it teaches you how to lose too mm. and, and how to handle that and how to handle the adversity because you know in the business world or life or whatever it is you're gonna lose you know even though you put the work in you mm -hmm. feel like you're the best you're prepared yep. Someone else is out there doing that exact same exactly. thing, uh, you know, competing with you, and and, and they're going to win. You're going to lose, and it teaches you how to uh, really, you know, as far as character wise, think back on how you can, uh, in, you know, work harder next time or do something yes. differently next time, right? Uh, but yeah, no, I I absolutely agree. Sports, you know, looking back is really where a majority of uh, you know my closest friends uh, and some of my fondest childhood memories come from from sports uh, I still put, play slow pitch softball to this day nice, nice. not quite a baseball player anymore but still get out there and play uh, some slow pitch softball and, and love love competing out there so so yeah no I can't agree more sports are a huge part of life and I think it really sets you up for later on down the road definitely definitely yeah so that when you lose like I said you know all right we gotta go practice harder we gotta push a little bit more you know maybe that week in practice you dogged it a little bit and you uh you know, took a little easy that week, and you lose that week, and next next week you're not dogging it anymore. You're back on it and giving it all your all. And you know, I think like I said a lot of parallel to life. Sometimes you, you hit a couple wins and you start coasting, and uh, you know it's you know once you start coasting, you take your foot off the gas a little bit. Next thing you know, you get smacked in the face with a two by four, and you lose. <laughs> and then, all right, I'm back on my game again. You almost need to get the kick in the ass every now and then, you know. You, but, you do. You need that wake up call a little bit, yeah. uh, and, and really helps you level set where you really are. You know, it's really. Uh, really easy if you're out there on practice and you know you kick butt and you field every ball the right way and do everything the right way and uh, you know when game starts uh, that's all out the window. So yeah, yeah, you know, so, as good as your next uh, deal, you're only as good as your next game, right? <laughs> so, so, so um, you've been in wireless industry. Uh, tell us about that. 
That's that's been an yeah. evolving industry. Obviously, sixteen years. You've seen a lot of change in that industry. Oh, it, it, that, that's the exciting thing about it. So, if, if you can't tell, I love talking about sports. I'm a huge, huge sports fan. I love sports. I, I just love the competition. I love the stats. I love the numbers. I love the you know the plays that go into the making you successful. Um, and th this is really kind of my sport that I've been passionate about is because it all goes into it just like sports. Um, you got to run certain plays or, you know, behaviors in the sales world to lead to success to like score touchdowns like you do in a football game. Um, but yeah, I've been doing it for 16 years. I started off as a customer service representative, literally the most bottom position. We, no one even actually hires that position really anymore in the, in the retail channel. Uh, I had to earn my way up to, to sales and assistant manager. And I was a store manager for five different locations. Uh, and, you know, I, I've been a district manager in multiple states. Uh, I, I was a district manager in, in Wisconsin. So, you know, an amazing market, but a very rural market in some places, a uh, huge territory. I was a district manager in Maryland, one of the biggest metropolitan areas between, you know, DC and Baltimore. I was a district manager in Delaware as well. And then, you know, now currently uh, in, in North Carolina and Charlotte. So, you know, I've been able to really bounce around the country and, you know, build connections, but learn a lot from so many different people, um, you know, as far as what's make them successful or opportunities and, you know, kind of trial some of my methods in really different markets. Uh, and that's what's, you know, helped me be successful is I have so much of a foundation to go back on that what would work in a rural commu community is different than what customers Very need different. here in Charlotte or, you know, different in Wisconsin is different than Maryland. Uh, and, and, you know, really be able to fine tune and change the pitch based on what the customer's needs are. Cause at the end of the day, that's, that's what you're there for is what the customer's looking to do. And, and, you know, in the wireless world, there's so many choices and everyone's the best at something. Everyone always has their claims on what they're the best at. And, and that's, it, it's, it all comes down to the, the person you're buying from. It comes down to the, the product, the quality, uh, and, and how comfortable you make them to make, you know, spend their money with you. And, and that's really what I'm, I'm able to do is, is teach the team those types of things. Nice, nice. So you were bouncing around the country moving or you were working remotely oh, yeah. kind of flying in? So you've been moving, oh, no, I'll, I'll, picking up and moving each. Move. Oh, yeah. A, that's a lot of moves. <laughs> Yeah, yeah, no, absolutely. It's a lot, a lot of moves. Um, you know, I, I, I was born in New Hampshire and I, I grew up, you know, I moved to Iowa in sixth grade, uh, you know, with some family and uh, I, I started my career there. And yeah, afterwards with, you know, having a wife and four kids moving across countries definitely brought its challenges. Oh yeah. A lot of people say that, uh, I, you know, we talk about, talk about where we moved from at like a baseball game and they're like, man, are you a military family? No, no, I'm in wireless. Uh, <laughs> and uh, it, it, it's funny. There's, like I said, there's so many different connections and, you know, been, been moved around and had so many opportunities. It's all been great moves for promotions or taking on new challenges. Um, so it's all been for, you know, really, really positive things. And, you know, I'm really blessed to have the, the supportive wife that I have. Um, you know, me and my wife have been together since, freshman year in high school um oh, wow. you know we have four kids together so uh you know moving changing sports teams you know all that can be could be really taxing on a family but you know my kids uh they understand it they're excited for them you know to kind of explore and go around and then my wife is just you know crazy supportive to hold everything together and make sure everything everything's perfect for the family so yeah we uh mother's day yesterday and shout out to all the moms out there uh i go live every every day i ride my bike and go live every day and yesterday i talked about uh about the moms out there and how basically, you know, we talk about FYE, forget your excuses and moms out there can't make excuses. They have to do the work. You know what I mean? If you really yeah. think about it, right? Moms don't get a day off. Moms are sick. They're still taking care of the kids. Yeah, we should help out more as guys and this and that. But most of the guy, you know, most of the time we work and whatnot. And if you really want to look at the example of someone knows how to get stuff done, look at a mom. Look at how they juggled getting the kids to sports. And then if you're a career mom, so you're juggling your job and the kids and the laundry and the dinner and everything else cleaning the house and doing the bills and whatever else they take under their belt and uh it's really wild so shout out to the moms the unsung heroes and if you want to see how to get something done go look at a mom because <laughs> uh you know yeah you know your wife four kids my wife with six kids I, I don't know how they do it i literally i don't <laughs> yeah they, they, they're multitasking skills uh yeah. some, some employees could definitely take some notes on their multitasking totally, and, totally. and getting things done at a high quality that's for sure but yeah definitely echo that message on shout out to all the moms and yeah, mother's yeah. day yesterday i really think that's why a lot of women uh really are starting to excel in the in, you know in the workforce and out in the world you know in corporate worlds because 
they know how to get stuff done. I mean, you know, they, they do. You know, uh, we can't even take care of ourselves, and they take care of themselves and, you know, six kids. So, <laughs> right. Yep. Yeah, yeah. No, so. I, I, I agree. Uh, some of my best mentors uh, that I've had have, have been females in the industry and have taught me a lot and looking at things from different, you know, different perspectives and different things that I, I normally wouldn't see. So, yeah, absolutely. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So, uh, yeah, so we got a little Mother's Day shout out to all the moms. <laughs> So, um, so now you're, you're taking your skills into, um, into, uh, you're actually doing one-on-one -on -one coaching or are you doing consulting or how, how, how are you doing it? Yeah. So I'm, I'm doing a, a couple different things. So I, I'm doing one-on-one -on -one consulting, uh, so to, you know, diagnose some different business needs, help out with any sort of pain points you have. Um, you know, and some of the most common ones that have come up to me recently is, you know, should I hire more people or, you know, I have an unmotivated team. How do I motivate them? Mm -hmm. Or we have a big product launch coming up and it's, 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 it's crucial. We got to make sure that, you know, our team's prepared and hit X, Y, Z numbers. Um, all of those type of things, sit down and go through uh, with them how to exactly do that and detail it out and articulate that for them and put that into, you know, a process. Uh, and I'm also able to do different trainings as well. So people can have me come on, you know, via Zoom or in person. Uh, and train train their employees on different customer service or sales or behaviors or whatever it is in your industry as well um, to do some of that too. That's funny. So that, that's that's mainly what I'm starting off doing. I, like I said, I really specialize in motivation, the 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 hiring, how to you know get an unmotivated team to be motivated. Um, it, just doing that type of stuff, product launches, that's all the stuff that I really specialize in um, that I can really help business owners or, you know, really that translates into really anything. You know, it could be, you know, insurance or real estate, whatever it is. If you have yeah, a team totally. of people, um, it doesn't have to be just retail. It, it goes into all those same kind of things work in really all facets of business. I mean, that's probably the most common problems that most organizations, whether whatever kind of organization you have, whether it's a corporate, you know, corporate, a company where you got a bunch of people, you know, in an office, or you got a team of people out in sales. And, you know, motivation. I struggle. I got my real estate team, and you know, some members of the team, you know, I don't know for whatever reason, they just don't have the drive that the other members do. And I try and equalize. I try and encourage them and whatnot. I think it's something that we all struggle with, and we probably should talk about that. Uh, one of the best ways to get you know teams motivated and stuff. I mean, you think financially, they work on straight you know, commission. It's real estate, so um, you know. The money's there. Come and get it. But yet, they, you know, they don't show up for meetings and they don't, you know, take a yeah. They don't call the leads and they don't do all the stuff that they need to do. And uh, I don't know. To me, it, it kind of boggles me in my mind sometimes when you're you're in this career. Well, a lot of times, it's you know, from my team, it's mostly part-time agents, so it's a second job for them. And they yeah. let a lot of stuff come in front of it. I'm like, you you went out and you spent, you know, for us, it's uh, 75 hours to get your real estate license, right? And you went out there and you got your license and you took your tests. And, you know, you started out here and you've sat at open houses and you know, I've given you leads and I've showed you what to do and you don't call them and you don't go to the open houses and you don't do this stuff. And it's like, like, why did you go through this whole process? Like, what lost the motivation that made you sit in school for 75 hours and now you don't want to go make the money? Um, right. You know, maybe give some ideas on that of uh, what, what you'd say to, to motivate a team like that. Yeah, I mean, I mean, honestly, just you know, off off the cuff, it would be why did they do it in the first time place? What what yeah. what was their thought process? You know, what is their end goal and help visualize that? Um, one of the things that I always do is you know I remind a hire, um, you know, not just when they're struggling, but just consistently what I liked about them, why they were there. Mm -hmm. When you're doing that interview, I always look at, I always ask a question, you know, where does the next three to five years look like for you? You know, because I want to have someone that's planning on being there long term. I don't want just short term people. And they'll tell me it's to you know travel my family, it's to get a house, it's to get my first car, it's to buy a secondary house. Uh, and, and I remind them of that because sometimes mm. it's easy in the crazy life that we have to lose focus on the end goal or the bigger picture. It's just, nah, I'm tired today. I don't want to make those calls or I'll do those calls later. Or I'll do that later. Uh, and they forget the bigger picture of things. Um, you know, and the other thing uh, on top of that, other, other than reminding them why I hired them or what their end goal is, is I like to have fun. Like, I, I, I gotta be honest, I, 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 that's, I'm a smack talker yep. and I, I, you know, not everyone's motivated by that, motivated by that, of course, but I, I do a lot of fun smack talk. You know, I'll, I'll, I'll shoot them that, you know, that nice text message or send that GIF or I'll call them real quick and, and you know, poke them a little bit. Um, be like, all right, yeah, 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 get, fire, get them fired up. Yeah, yeah. And something that, 
you know, you can really, I'm a big energy person, um, kind of like a, you know, kind of like a college football coach. I said, I coach little kids. I, I'm the energetic person and I love, love pumping people up. So I'll, I'll poke some people and send those text messages out there and get people fired up and I'll, I'll, I'll uh, try to help remind them who they are or why they're here, uh, what they're looking to do. So I like that kind of reverse engineer it back into, uh, you know, what, what made you get started and, you know, what made you lose your weight type thing. I like that. I guess it goes back to yeah. our vision board, right? Where's, where's Steve uh, Gammon when you need him? You know, do you know Steve? <laughs> I don't know if you met Steve yet. I, I haven't yet. Yeah, no, the, yet. the vision board uh, master. So uh, basically you put all your stuff on your vision board so you look at it every day and you remember why you're getting out of bed and going to do what you do because you, you know, look at it every day. And I really think it's important. I think sometimes we do lose focus, right? It's back to the gratitude we talk about. If you're not grateful for what you have already, how can you receive more? And so if yeah. you're not, you know, that vision of what you have on that wall, you know, if you're looking at that every day, you forget why you're actually getting out of bed to go to work. So, uh, right. Yeah. I, I, and the vision, vision board, I mean, I, I recently, like, we were talking, we were joking around about fitness right before this, you know, started on, on the, uh, you know, the bike rides that you're doing and everything. I talked about how I'm going for a five mile run right after this, um, that the vision of what you're looking to do, I think it's super successful in any business and sales or in your personal life. I, I most recently just lost 70 pounds. Um, oh, wow. so I, I've struggled with, with weight pretty much my entire yeah. adult life. Join the club, yeah. <laughs> yeah, it, with retail and, you know, I would drive, you know, my territory would be pretty much all of Wisconsin. So I'd be in the car 10 hours a day. Yeah, yeah. And uh, so a lot of fast food, a lot of unhealthy uh, eating and being busy with kids. And, you know, one of the things I did is I, I saved a, a, a picture of my bigger self on my phone. So I got to see it every day. So when I would wake up at, you know, 6 a.m. or 5 a.m. to go for my run or start my day or, you know, diet, that was a big thing. And then, you know, keeping track, uh, you know, keeping daily goals on what you're looking to hit in sales or weight loss or whatever it is, uh, it, keeping you on track and, and, you know, not letting yourself slip, right, uh, is super important. I think that's the big thing in, in sales as well as staying on top of your goals, staying, remembering what you're looking to accomplish instead of just that one small day, right? So. All right, accountability, right? So when you, you know, you do Weight Watchers, oh. What do you got? Uh, Unmute Dr. yourself. Here. There you go. From the from the peanut gallery. All right, my mind's still on something that you asked earlier, Brian. Sorry to interrupt, boys. Jump in, jump right, in. So I I have a lot of clients that I'm coaching and I'm talking with and everything else, and I haven't tagged you or brought you into the mix yet, Chris. But Brian touched upon something about the um, lack of energy, lack of focus, lack of purpose, lack of in general for an employee. Number one, you know, say you have a team, you know, I. A business we have to have cash flow to keep things going there's a difference between profit and cash flow so we need to live and breathe by cash flow to keep it going but if your employees your sales team isn't up to par and they're waxing and waning what is the metrics that you look at to find out to get them back on the kpis to get them back on the highs when do you cut them loose what's some of the you know so what's some of the takeaways that i can give some of my clients yeah, I was on this podcast last night. Here's five or six things that you can do. Yeah, yeah. So I, I, I what I would do instantly is you got to focus on your big on on your, something big. Get a win. So if you have a, a losing mm. team, almost every market or district I've gone to um, before I got there wasn't successful at that time. We turned around quickly. Uh, you got to find a win, right? It doesn't matter if it's a, a, a huge a huge win a small win, you find a win to celebrate with your team and let them feel the success and see the success. That would be the very first thing I would do. And it, it, I would start with an easier one, one you know your team can, can win. Uh, and then I would focus on two things, the biggest, the biggest mover for your business, whatever's the biggest weight, whatever's the biggest priority, and you go after that and use the momentum and remind your team, look how quick we move, turned around this metric, which was your first win. We're gonna do that with this too and we're gonna win. And you build that with two or three three things in that first month. And your team's got the energy back. You'll see your team have that energy back. You start having some fun with them, right? Throw out some small fun contest with, you know, hand out some Starbucks or, you know, today I'm running a bingo contest uh, with my team. Uh, you know, we put a couple sales goals and whoever gets a bingo based on some of the different things that they're able to accomplish uh, gets gets lunch, right? We'll do, we'll do lunch. Something small like that, those fun, small, cheap things you can get your team going, get some wins under the belt. And you'll be able to see real quick too on who doesn't get excited because you got oh, to know your team real quick as well. Like who wants to be there, who's there for the right reasons. You're gonna see people get excited like, oh, Starbucks, I get Starbucks, let's go. And then you have some other people be like, nah, that's stupid. 
that I, that I made. We've, we've never won before. We're not going to win. That's not going to work. I've seen a, a hundred people like you. It's not going to work. Well, those might be people that you need to have more of a, a, a private one-on-one -on -one with and, and make sure they're right for your business at that point, right? Re re readdress why they're there, what they're looking to do. Um, and you want to make sure that those people are like, oh, Starbucks or, hey, we're going to get it this weekend. You put those people on a pedestal. You shout that out to your team. Hey, look how good this person's doing or look how this person led the way. Great job. Because people at the end of the day are going to want to be successful. They're going to want some of that positive recognition, even though recognition might not motivate them, but they're going to want those wins. They're going to do that. So two things, Dr. B, I'd say is get a win right away, whatever it is, small or big, you're going to use that as motivation to get your big rocks that you need. You're going to find out who's on your team, who wants to be there and who doesn't really quickly based on those silly contests or, you know, a big weekend or whatever it may be. So it helps you tell a lot about your business quickly right there. So that'd be my quick answer. You guys were talking about sports and competition. Right? So you're almost creating like an internal company's competition thing. Absolutely. Do you, do you post like, could you create scorecards and, yeah. and and post that so they can all see like on Monday morning, Bob beat me on Friday. So I got to double down to be, is that what you do? Oh, absolutely. Every single day. Yeah. So every day, um, actually throughout the day as well. Right. It'd be crazy if you didn't. So if you're running a business and you don't have a scorecard or a scoreboard, right. Or, or some sort of performance, um, you might be missing because it'd be kind of like having a basketball game with no scoreboard. You're running around, you're sweating, you're trying really, really hard. And at the end of the day, you're like, man, I hope we won. We'll, we'll, uh, we'll find out when the newspaper comes out, you know, tomorrow. Um, so, Yes, every single day I have all of my important KPIs or important sales metrics put on a scorecard, I have my entire team and we stack rank, you know, who's top, who's bottom, who led in what category and we have them share a best practice. Hey, why did, you know, Brian, why did you lead the way yesterday? What did, you know, was there any takeaways you could share with the team? So they're getting a best practice, they're getting a stack ranking, um, but we send out end of day performance every single morning. Uh, so it's fresh thing, first thing that they see in their inbox. Um, so we know who won, you know, right? Winners, winners keep score. And then throughout the day, do midday numbers, who's on pace, who's not. And what I'm able to see as a leader is, you know, who I can reach out to and have those conversations with who's struggling. Maybe I can give them a little, you know, a little kick in the butt or maybe give them a pointer, right? Maybe it's, hey, try this promotion or, hey, why don't you try it this way with what you're struggling on? And then I can praise those publicly on who's kicking butt uh, that day and who's achieving goal. Um, so yeah, absolutely. Scorecards, stack rankings, internal competition, um, all of that is extremely important. Uh, and, and the teams, although if you ask someone if they're competitive, they might tell you, no, I don't like that. You'll find a lot of the quiet people when they get that, they might not say anything, but when they see that they, that they'll pump up that their name's on top or they, they're pumped up that their name's moving towards the top. Um, and it could be just a simple fact they're sick of hearing that Brian's winning, that they want to get his name off there and get someone else on there, right? So yeah, the stack rankings do so much internal competition and so much you know positive for your business. Yeah, I think that's uh, huge. I think some people just like to be recognized almost more than they get more satisfaction of being recognized as a winner, as a leader of of the group, as than the money. And I think that maybe is possibly uh, something I got to do better at as far as you know. I'm I'm assuming that. Money's driving them, and maybe it's not really the money. Maybe it's the uh, little competition. If you think we've been talking about this, right? What's the common theme here? Competition, competition, competition. Sports all through our lives. Now business, <clears throat> you know, lean on the competition side of it, not so much the financial side of it. And people like to be recognized. Everyone wants to be said, "Hey, you did a great job." You know, you did a great job today. I mean, that goes a pat on the back goes huge. You know, I I, yeah. I really believe that. When you tell someone, "Hey, listen, great job today." Tomorrow they're going to go kill for you. If, you they, if they did great today and you didn't recognize it, tomorrow they're like, why should I work so hard? No one even noticed I worked hard, you know? So I think that's just human nature, that, that pat on the back and that, you know, recognizing so-and-so was in the lead is really uh, drives everyone else to do it. And I know for real estate agents, getting that first deal done is game changer. Real estate agents, because they don't believe in themselves until they actually do it. And that's what I yeah. found. So until I, I push all my new agents, you've got to get a deal done. I'm giving them leads. I'm giving them open house. Whatever I can do to get them a deal done, they get that deal done, and they're like a different person. All right, I got this. I sold the house. I'm a real estate agent now. And now yeah. like that whole mindset changes where they start, you know, they believe in themselves. I really think what it comes down to. You know, they doubt themselves in the beginning. Can I actually do this? And once you start hitting some sales, and or like you said, if, if you're if you, the top salesperson, now all of a sudden you're not. You're like, whoa, I know I can be the top salesperson. I've done it already. You know, so... Yeah. You know, you get that belief in yourself, which is, I think, huge. And 
allowing uh, allowing your team to believe in themselves by patting them on the back and encouraging them to keep doing what they're doing. I think is uh, important. I think a lot of us forget that a little bit. We get caught up in a, in a rush and we forget to give the pat on the back so that everyone likes to have. Yeah, and I, one thing that you said there, Brian, I, I agree with you is, you know, if you have some top performers and you're not recognizing them, that can almost hurt a team more. Um, you know, you probably, you obviously have heard, you know, that if you allow, you know, bad employees or cancerous employees um, to continue doing their ways, that will affect the good ones, right? Um, so you got you got to address those right away. But the same thing when you have top performers or people getting it done and you're not recognizing them or giving those high fives or, you know, tell, you know, pub, you know, shouting out to the other team members or anything you'll see you can see them sometimes lose dip those not super self-motivated people mm. that are in it for the recognition they'll take a step back they'll fall back like hey yeah. you know they don't care right uh, they're not recognizing what i'm doing so why would i try so hard i can maybe just i, I can just coast i'm comfortable right so yeah I, I think that can hurt a team sometimes just as much as um you know some other things that are important to business that i think leaders sometimes miss on yeah, definitely. I like what you said there. Um, touch upon uh, the cancer in your group. Um, yeah. We all know that if there's some, if you're in the lunchroom and there's a dozen people sitting there, and eleven people are having a great day and everybody's good, and someone's sitting there go, "This job sucks. The boss is an ass. You know, we're not getting enough." And and they just sit there. Before you know, it, by the end of lunch, the whole table sitting there going, "Yeah, this place sucks. I don't know why we work here. We don't make enough money." And I think it's so important to recognize that cancer and and have to sit down one on one and talk to them, find out what the problem is, and if that doesn't work, they got to go. Um, I do yeah. believe in a sit down. Um, I've had many occasions where you have a person that's messing up, and they don't realize they're messing up. They're they're caught in their own bubble and say, "Hey, what's going on with you? Like you were the best employee, and now you're telling me everything sucks. Like what happened? Oh, you don't understand. You know, uh, whatever. There's something going on in their personal life. There's something going on financially in their life, and and you start realizing, say, all right, well, talk to me rather than tell me everything sucks. Let's see if we can figure this out together." And I've taken a, a bad employee and made him back into a good employee just with a conversation of, hey, you're screwing up, you know, and they don't even realize they're screwing up. They're coming in late, they're leaving early, they're taking long lunches and, you know, because their head's not in the game and sometimes you shake them a little bit and they go, oh, wow, I didn't realize that. I'm about to lose my job over this. Let me get my act back together. And I'd say a good 50% of the time that straightens them out. And if that doesn't straighten them out, then they got to go. But uh, a lot of times yeah. I really think that conversation needs to happen before you fire someone, if, especially if they were a good employee at one point, you know, you need to shake them a little bit. So what's going on with you? You were, you were the top guy and now you're not. What's going on? And, um, you know, having problems at home, having problems financially, I'm having health problems, whatever. And, you know, sometimes uh, they don't realize how they went off the rails. So uh, I think it's really important to recognize and, and have that conversation one on one. Yeah. No, a couple things stood out to me. What you just said, Brian, is about how they used to be good employees and they used to do this. Right. Most times when we have that, when you're, you know, you didn't say it, but you know, you're elaborating to those are a lot of times the tenured people. Hmm. Those are the tenured employees that have been there and they've done it. They've yeah. seen it and yeah. maybe they're not running as hard as they could. You know, those sometimes are the hardest people to turn around. I'm just, you know, thinking back so, so many of my employees right now that uh, were success stories that turned around and some, some didn't, to be honest with you. Some of them chose to do other places, uh, which is great. They're happy now and they're flourishing. So that's, that's awesome. That's what we want at the end of the day. Um, but remind them about, you know, this is the new message. We're taking things that, you know, we're going to do things differently this time and how you need them as a leader and how you need them. And, you know, how can we do this together, you know, hand in hand, I, I think is a big way to turn a lot of those people around that I've used personally myself because mm -hmm. they are tenured. Yeah. They have all that experience. It's tough yeah, to they replace the knowledge, them. Yeah. Let that person go and try to hire a new person and teach them, you know, 10, 15 years, five years of experience, whatever it may be. Um, so if you just sit down and have a real conversation, how much you need them as a leader and how they used to be good and you can do that again and what's holding you back kind of thing. I think those conversations are great. Um, instead of just sitting down and like, ah, this person said they don't like the boss or they're negative. Let's just cut them. Let's get rid of them. Right. Um, never, I, I would never recommend doing that right away, uh, giving up on somebody because those people could be an absolute asset for you. Um, getting things going the right direction. And like you said, give them the feedback. The last person, it, it's tough to give feedback, right? That's not fun for us. You know, any leader sit down right. and tell someone how they're not doing well or, or, you know, maybe their peers don't like them or how they're tough to manage. No one likes to give that feedback just like no one likes to hear that feedback. So a lot of leaders in the past, maybe were just lazy and skipped it or didn't have that conversation, picked and chose what to have. So you having that would also build trust with them right away too because you're having a real conversation trying to help them because I'm a firm believer that no one wakes up in the morning and, you know, brushes their teeth and they're like, you know what, 
I'm going to go to work today and just suck. I hope I piss <laughs> everyone off, you know, yeah, I, yeah. you know, and there might be some of those people out there, yeah. but a majority of the people that we're working with, um, you know, we have the pleasure of, you know, supporting in some capacity no, aren't thinking that way. Right. So I, I think th that's what I would say on that with the, some of the tenured people and they turn them into your biggest assets. Yeah. Communication, right. It's, it's what life is all about. Those of us that know how to communicate, you excel. Um, whether it be with your wife, with your kids, you know, yeah. coaches on the field with the, with the players, you know, sometimes you have to have those hard conversations. A lot of us, I don't know, get scared of the hard conversations and we avoid them. And then the problem gets worse and we avoid the conversation. It gets worse and we avoid the conversation. And if you would have just sat down six months ago and had this conversation, the problem may not have been gotten so out of hand, but we're all afraid to have the tough conversations. I think it's something that we really all need to pay attention to and learn. I know in my life and a lot of friends around me, like I said, whether it be a problem with your wife that's going on, if you would have sat and said, hey, listen, can we fix this? Can we work on this earlier? It wouldn't have got to the, that far down the road. And same thing with an employee. You know, you got a tenured employee and you kind of just let them coast because you don't want to have that tough conversation. But at the same time, if you had that conversation, all of a sudden they get better. Well, that wasn't so bad, right? Right. You yeah. Know? Well, I think we always make mountains out of molehills, right? We always make things bigger yeah. than they are, right? So if you just tackle it right away when the problem's there, you fix it, it's easy, and you can relax, and everybody wins together earlier than later. Absolutely. Yep. Yeah, yeah. So, um, so you were talking uh, earlier about um, talking about when uh, when it's time to hire and when it's time to fire, I guess, as far as in the corporate world. And um, different industries obviously have different things. Um, one of the companies I'm involved in is a union shop, so you got to hire union guys from the hall, um, and that, you know, that comes with its whole thing. Um Right now, there's, uh, you have to hire one out of every four guys from the hall. So you can hire three guys off the street that come with resumes and recommend it, and the fourth guy, it's the luck of the draw, whoever you get, which is tough in that union world. That's part of why the union world's having so many issues. You know, There's a reason that guys can't get their own job because you know they obviously don't have a resume that supports them to get a job. So the union forces you to take them and hire them. Once in a while, you get lucky. It's someone that was unknown and doesn't have connections. But uh, at the other times, it's uh, you, know, you get some guy that, you know, doesn't even show up works two hours a day and yeah. so we run into a problem in that business of you slow to fire which you don't want to because if i lose these guys with talent i don't know what i'm getting when i go to hire again because i got to get a guy from the hall and i don't know who's available so in the past we always kept guys on that were talented because the next job's coming but it didn't start for two weeks it didn't start for three weeks so you're kind of almost paying guys to hang out on the job because if you send them home they go work for someone else and the next time you hire you want to get in who knows what so it's a problem um in that world and then um and then to hire them they're they're big salaries to put on so you're like if i put more guys on i don't know what i'm getting it's a big salary to find out if they're not any good uh, and then you yeah. also bring cancer into the into the room you got a bunch of guys that are company guys that are working hard and all of a sudden this guy comes in and making similar pay and he's doing half the work. Why should we work so hard? This guy's making the same money as us and he's doing half the work, you know, and I've seen it all happen out in the world. And uh, I think it's a big problem out in, you know, industry, especially in the union sector of where your control, where your workforce is controlled by other sources. Um, any ideas on, um, on stuff like that? Yeah, I mean, for the union, I'm gonna be honest, unions aren't the biggest special to me. I've had a little bit of experience with cool. them. Uh, you know, the, the biggest things that when you're hiring anybody, when you control anything, for, for most leaders can, can teach everything, right? You've done it, you can teach it, you have that. You want that employee like you're talking about. That's showing up to work, right? Not working. It's that's work half the battle. Time. It's really just showing up five days a week on time and putting in their eight hours a day. I mean, once you get someone that yeah. shows up and does eight hours, everything yeah. else you can teach them. You know, that's yeah, the hardest. You're ready to go to battle. It's like running a team without having a shortstop, right? Yeah. Um, so you know, the biggest things I can tell you in, in all of the hiring that I've done is is I'm I'm hiring the person, the character, the energy. Um, I me personally, you know, what I'm looking for in in the sales world or you know, anything that goes in a lot of different businesses, I, I don't care as much about the experience. I don't care, you know, how, you know, how, how many years they've done in sales. I'm going to be honest with you. I prefer, per, prefer none. I prefer yeah. no experience and all the time. Yeah, like, no I'll bad habits. They're like, they're like, ah, oh, I've never sold before. I don't know if I can do it. I'm like, ah, oh, you're perfect. I've been looking for you. Uh, and I can teach them sure. the right way to do things because there's so many different styles and, you know, and, and it's all more consultive that we're looking for. And, you know, you know, finding customers needs and putting products in their hands. Uh, it, we're not just trying to jam things down their throat. So it, it's, it's pretty easy. Um, but you know, looking for the energy, the work ethic and 
once again, I talked about it a little bit earlier is what are you looking to get out of? Like, what kind of career mm. are you looking for? Because I don't want to be hiring someone else three months from now or six, you know, six months from now. I want someone that I'm going to invest my time in that might not have the skills or the connections right now, but I'm going to get you those, right? If you put the hard work in, I'm going to get you those connections. I'm going to get you to where you need to be to, to buy that car or get that house or get that vacation, whatever it may be. So hiring the right type of people with the right energy, the right attitude it is the biggest thing. And, you know, I find all those type of people in, in honestly a lot, the service industry, these, these people are out there that, you know, are working for tips or, you know, taking care of customers, the busy craziness, all those, just like the hard work. And it, it, it you know, it's, it's difficult. It's tough. It's not easy. Uh, I'm looking for those people that are kind of battle tested. We talked about, you know, sports earlier about losing teaches you things in the service industry man you you lose a lot with some customers some customers let you have it mm. uh, and you got to bounce back right yeah. away and keep doing the job in a big way and in the sales world man you're you are told no all the time like pe people come there and they're like driving to wherever you whatever place of business you do and they're like right, i'm gonna tell this guy no he's gonna <laughs> offer me this. i'm gonna say no like i ain't doing this i ain't buying that extended warranty i ain't getting this it's happening um but you gotta you know have that personality and that character and that energy to come off that your customer can feel and that's why it's important um, and, and just have someone that, you know, has the maturity to follow whatever process you have of getting to know the customer, getting to know the product and, and be able to recommend things back. So yeah, that, that's why I'd say, like I said, I don't know a ton about the union, unions. I know there's lots of stipulations. You have to go certain ways. Yeah. Um, but you know, within those people, if you have a choice to make, it, it's, it's, I would say not about, you know, exact skills that you can't teach it's, or, you know, work history. It's, it's going to be about the person that shows up to work. Cause you can't do anything. It doesn't yeah, matter. Show up for us too. <laughs> right. Why are they coming to work? Because it ain't easy in today's world all the time to, to come to work in certain things, depending on how much money you make with, you know, gas prices or this or that. It's not easy. So you got to have that person that's coming to work for a reason. They're not just going to go. Uh, what is that big reason? And then you can teach the rest. Yeah. hundred percent. That goes back to uh, our friend Thomas Keenan with, uh, I don't know if you've read that book, uh, unfuck your business. Um, I, I actually, have it I actually there? have it. I have it right here. So, so Thomas is a good friend of uh, mine and Dr. B's and uh, he wrote that book and it's all about your core values and yeah. hiring on your core values, which is what you just talked about. Hiring the people with the work ethic that you want, the values that you have. And, um, you know, it's funny that, you know, this, all these topics just keep coming back up and in successful people. And it's just the same thing over and over again. You know, getting, I love the young guns that come in uh, that, that actually have the hustle. In them. I don't care if they know anything. I don't care if they make mistakes, if they're yep. trying. Like I hire on people that try. If you're not yeah. trying, you know, I want you to make mistakes. That's how you learn. You know, I don't expect it to be perfect, but if you're not even trying, what's the point? You know, and that's it's everything you said is basically what I've always done. I look for that raw talent. You know, the young kid that came in that doesn't know anything but wants to learn. And you know, you want you want you show up every day and you want to learn. That's the number one employee right there. You know, um, opposed to the guy that has the 20 years and thinks he knows it all and. Mm -hmm doesn't want to learn you know even if he does it wrong well that's the way i've always done it well it doesn't mean it's right you know so like you said finding a guy that's the new guy that isn't you know doesn't know it all and doesn't have the bad habits and uh i always uh, when i find those people i always get a little you know put them under my wing a little bit and try and show them the way because it's like raw talent that's hard to find these days you know oh, the, the show up factor you yeah know? it's not about how long you've been somewhere it's about what you've done with the time you've been there and, yeah. and that's i remember i remember saying that in an interview a long time ago i was applying for my first store manager job and uh, i was the the way younger person at that time and uh, i'm not really so much anymore but i used to be and and this person had like 15 years of experience that was a question like well you know you know so and so has 15 years of experience and you're just an assistant manager like what are you gonna do and i and i, and I remember asking the question like well, have they won yet lately did, did are they good because it's not yeah. just about how long you've been somewhere it's about what you do with the time you're here and i you know look at look what i've done like i i kick the hell out of numbers like my team wins my team has fun we have a great culture so so yeah i don't care how long they've been there right it's about yeah. it's about the energy the attitude and what you bring to the table now not about the resume from 10 15 years ago i did right so and, and those people you know if you think about it if you bring someone on your team that's that young gun like you said that's doing it man oh man that's gonna fire up your veterans to get going again because yeah. they, they have it they have it in them they haven't forgot they're just maybe not hustling as fast but um I, i've seen nothing makes them hustle again as fast as uh, having a young person or a new person showing up or, <laughs> I, I mean young by like tenure yeah. of course yeah. um you know young tenured person uh in there just kicking butt oh man that's gonna fire your team up and if you get scorecards going and stack rankings going and competition going and you back that up with some smack talk oh man your team's gonna catch fire yeah, yeah, we do a lot of games like that. We said like the 
you know, the new guys up against the old guys running lines of duck work we do air conditioning and yeah. and a little competition. We're like, oh, you only got twenty pieces up? They're on thirty pieces already. What what have you been doing all day? Like, you know, it you know, it's what do you mean? You know, and it's it then you just a little friendly competition comes and next thing you know, I have I put more up than you and I put more up than you and before you know it everyone's killing for you and they're having fun doing it. And that's part of uh we've talked about before culture, right? You know, and the 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 culture of a business, like people want to be there. They want to, they want to wear the logo. They want to wear the hat that has the company name on it because they're proud to be there, right? And they have a culture of, you know, it's something they want to be a part of and they want to build it together, you know, as a team, as as a unit, rather than uh, us and them. There's a lot of times, you know, there's the, there's the boss and then there's the, the employees, or it's us as a team, collaborative of everybody. And I think I never even like the word employees because I feel like I don't know. I feel like it's almost degrading to say, you know, we work together. I'd rather say we work together. These are people I work with rather than yeah. these are my employees because yeah. without the employees you can't make money and without the boss running everything they can't make money you need each other so we work together we're not boss and employees and i always like to break that barrier because i don't i just don't love the the vibe of it you know don't call me boss like let's work together here we're all in, we all have a common purpose we're all trying to feed our families the best we can right we're all trying to do yeah. it as easy as possible and as fun as possible and en enjoy our day um you know I think uh, I don't like those terms, and I think some of my friends that I've talked to agree with the same thing. Like, let's, let's stop, you know, the boss is, you know, untouchable, and, you know, he's higher than everybody. It's not, we're all in, in the, uh, oh, he's jumping. Uh, Dr. B, it's a pleasure Hi, to have Dr. you B. on here. Uh, hey, thanks for having me, guys. I, I got a call in about five minutes, I got to jump on, so I'm going to bug out. And, uh, thanks for the introduction um, to Chris. This was great. Uh, Obviously, uh, one of us, as I no, no doubt knew that. <laughs> He's going to be there. You have my permission to pick on him at the cigar event and at yeah. NDM. Yep, yep. And any of you guys listen, grab him and pick on him. I'm, I'm the big uncle. You can do whatever you want with him. He's all right. Yeah. And congratulations, Dr. B, on your uh, new position over there. Uh, an iconic. Yeah. Well, that's what I'm got to go get on a late night call now. Thanks to that new position I got to get on. So that's it's it, work that's it. in now. It actually triples. Well deserved, well deserved. And uh, yeah, that's uh, awesome. Congratulations. And tell Mr. Whitehead I said hello. I will. You guys take care. Talk to you later. All right. Have a good night, Dr. Bye. There we go. So, uh, yeah, he's the best. Like I said, I think uh, we really connected down in uh, Tampa at Stacey Rasky's event. And. Yeah. Uh, He's just awesome human in every which way. So uh, yeah, he, he like I said, he's been a, a mentor of me in my life. Um, you know, uh, so yeah, awesome, awesome person. I I, I completely agree. And ranks the richest story, right? I mean, started out with nothing and built an empire, and uh, yeah, he uh, and then basically uh, started over again, right? So he's he's reinvented himself and pivoted a bunch of times. It's a big uh, a big thing we talk about, right? When uh, stuff's not working, you got to figure out how to pivot and make it work. So, uh, yeah, I, I, I have a very similar story uh, from my childhood. So yeah, that, that's what motivates me every day for me and my kids to keep driving. And uh, you know, hopefully you don't give them a better life than what I had in childhood. My childhood ended up being good, taught me a lot of life lessons. Yeah, it wasn't yeah. the easiest, but uh, I, I, I want to be able to you know, support my kids and travel and have, you know, show them what you know, hard work can do, that's for sure. So. Yeah, yeah, that's that's what we do, right? So we get out of bed every day to make make the world a better place. I like to say all the time, by saying when I go live on Facebook, I close it out with uh, put your head on a pillow every night, knowing you made the world a better place, right? And, and if yep. you did, if you know that you gave it your best and you help people and you tried to make the world better, picked up a piece of garbage as you're walking down the street, pushed in a chair, or held a door for someone, whatever it is in your life, represent what winning looks like. Ryan Stuman says all the time, um, it's just yep. a good way to live and uh, leave leave the world better each day. So. Uh, but um, we're going on to uh, almost an hour here, so uh, I'm going to let you go play with the kids. Um, where can we find you? So my website's is hollywoodconsulting.com. Uh, you can reach out to me at hollywoodconsulting at gmail.com as well. Uh, I have all the social media and all that tagged right there on the website as well. Um, but, you know, what I would say is if anyone's listening or have any questions, just reach out to me. Um, you know, reach out to me, send me a message, ping me on Facebook or, you know, send me an email. Uh, I have all the connections right there through my website um, with some of the different programs that I have. Um, but if it doesn't, you don't feel like it fits you perfectly, shoot me a message. Uh, I, I'm completely adaptable. I know every business is a little bit diff different. Uh, and, you know, it's something I'm passionate about is helping people, helping them get, you know, share some of the success, some of the things I've learned uh, across the country in the last 16 years with, you know, high performing sales teams uh, and, and get your team going. 
I love it. I love it. I love it. Yeah, I mean, lots of lots of experience there from different areas and different rural to city to you know. So that's uh, that's a big difference. I've noticed in, in my life as I talk to people from different areas, especially now that I'm part of Apex and we go to Texas and I talk to realtors and I talk to other people in other areas yeah. of the country and what's working for them. Um, it's it's we get to put it all together and make a cake out of it. It's kind of nice. Um, it's, it's that layer that layer cake. Right, yep. right. And we talk about core values. One of the guys in Apex tell me he's hiring from Chick Fil A now. So when you go to Chick Fil A, right, they know how to get it done. Those are people. Those. Oh yeah. When you, right. So you think about yeah. like, where's a good source of raw talent? He goes to Chick Fil A. Because, I, I've yeah. brought my team to Chick Fil A before for a team meeting. So I did a whole store manager meeting, and we just our meeting was going to Chick Fil A and going to eat. And then right. I asked them for feedback afterwards or what they thought. It's like, how are all of these people doing it with similar similar cause? Yeah. The, the, the culture they have. You know, they say the same thing, and it doesn't matter where you're at in the country. Yeah. Like you could be in an airport or a football stadium has Chick-fil-A, or you could be, you know, in Iowa or Wisconsin or, you know, on the East Coast, they're all going to say and do the same thing. Yeah. It's, just, it's, just, it's just perfect. They, yeah, they have their training down. Unbelievable. It's really yeah. like, it's just a joy to watch. And it's funny. I don't know if you probably the same thing. I kind of get excited when I'm sitting online watching everyone work. I'm like, wow, they got it down. Like, you know, like when you see something yeah. operating really good, you're like, I'm going to take notes. That's awesome. You know, I'm going to come back and get another chicken sandwich. <laughs> but, uh, yep. yeah, I thought it was funny. A friend of mine, see, that's where he's pulling his raw talent from. Hey, do you want to make more money? I like what you're yep. doing here. And they taught the basics. They show up every day. They, they, you know, they know how to talk to people. They have the game down. And I think he said one of the last people he hired was, like, the trainer for a Chick-fil-A. And I'm like, Oof. that's awesome. A, Gold mine now. Yeah, right, right. They're in now. Right, you figure they're making probably a little better minimum wage there and, you know, say, hey, listen, you want to make real money? Like, come work with me in, in, a, in a real job. And uh, I just thought that was a kind of a neat outside-the-box way to hire. Like, you know, let's go let's go watch them in action a little bit. Let's sit there and see who's who's the superstars here and offer them a job. So I just thought that was fun. Fun way to close it out. So, all right, Chris, thanks for coming on. Uh, it was awesome meeting you. It's the first time we've actually met semi in person. Uh, we chatted a little bit online. And Dr. B, of course, uh you know, told me that we needed to meet, and I'm glad he uh, connected us. And now when we go have cigars down in uh, Texas in, uh, what, about three weeks out now, I think it is? About three weeks, yeah. About three weeks, weeks out, yeah. So that's, uh, those of you that don't know, um, Iconic, uh, Mr. Whitehead, is doing a uh, cigar night, uh, one of the local cigar lounges there. And uh, I think there's only 100 people going, so get on the list and uh, get into that. It's going to be a fun event with a bunch of us there talking high-level shop and having some fun um and that's before the big mdm extravaganza get online for that because uh there's not many tickets left i think it's just about sold out so uh it's june 2nd is the cigar night third fourth fifth uh dallas texas uh it's gonna be an awesome event so make sure you're part of that uh you won't be sorry that's uh i went there last year and it was half the event that it is this year and i was hooked so uh definitely uh put that on your agenda and uh get down into texas and change your life a little bit chris thanks for coming on um, awesome meeting you and I uh, look forward to chatting further in the future uh, I'll share some more ideas so absolutely pleasure meeting you and thank you so much for having me on Brian yes, I sir. appreciate it alright guys everyone have a good night we will see you next week and uh, go follow Chris online on uh, Facebook and uh, and go check out his website there and uh, connect um, learning from uh, people that have been there before is the best way to get ahead in life without wasting time so Put the money into coaching, put the money into learning, put the time into learning. Um, don't try and re reinvent the wheel. People have uh, been making wheels for years and uh, go use their wheels. So, all right, everyone. Have a good night. I appreciate you all, and we will see you next week.